Hi, I'm Kelly from Kelly Jones Jewelry. And this is the, uh, the Beginner's Guide to Wire Handling Part 2. We're going to do a bit of symmetry. We're going to do the same wire handling as we did last time, but we're going to try and match it all up. And I couldn't resist adding a little stone at the bottom. Written in the description below is everything you'll need with all the usual links, Etsy, Facebook, Instagram. Let's get started. So to make this pendant, you'll need 1.5mm wire, which is 14 gauge. And I've cut one length at 6 inches. And your base wires, I've cut two at 8 inches, which is 20.5 centimetres. And those are the 20 gauge, which is 0.8 millimetre. And I've got an 8 millimetre jump ring. That's outside measurement. Tools. I've got my bail pliers, my um, normal pliers and my wire cutters. I'm using my old cutters today so I don't spoil my good cutters on that thick wire. Take your thick wire and find the centre. And then take your base wire and find the centre of that one as well. And we're going to start just to the left of the centre on your on both of them actually. We'll start just to the left of those centre points. I'm just going to attach by wrap, wrapping once around the thick wire. And then I'm going to do a half loop. And then hold that against the wire and wrap around the other side. So we've got that. And now we're going to attach the other wire as well. So find the centre point and working just to the left of that centre point. And we're going to go to the left of this. I'm just going to slide that out of the way for now. And we want to wrap around as we did just... And then we're going to go around, follow that shape a little bit bigger and then holding that together I'm going to attach to the other side of it so we've got two loops and two wires so you want to slide that back to the centre because it's really moving all over the place. So that's in the middle. And then we're going to shape the actual thicker wire. I'm going to take that up on both sides to shape into a teardrop shape. I'm just going to let those fall forward for a minute. We want to make a nice little teardrop. And where the wires meet at the top, take the one and bend it out so that both the wires sit to the right at the top. And we've got this shape at the bottom. So that's what we've got so far. So holding the bottom in place, I'm going to take this outer wire and I'm going to scoop it up so that it reaches to the side. And then holding it in place, I'm just going to wrap around. Now you've got to be careful now because you want to go around, but you want to come between those wires so that you're not strapping that wire now to the frame. So you've got to try and keep a shape. Like that. And 
And then we're going to do it with the other side. So we'll turn it upside down. And take this outer wire. Shape it out. To try and match the left one. Left one if it's upside down. We're just trying to match the other side. And then hold that. We're going to take this wire. Try and hold it against the wire the best you can so it doesn't misshape. Take it around. Try and pull it firmly without misshaping the front too much. So I want to look at symmetry today so you want to constantly keep matching up to the other side. So now these two wires, I'm going to really exaggerate a curve now, to come there, and then hold that there, and take this wire, bend it around, So, I've got that shape, and then do the same for this one, really scoop it around, and try and match them up the best you can, and then hold it in place. Hold it in place quite firmly, try not, try not to let the wire move too much. And then wrap that one around the wire. So we've got this shape. So next I'm going to take this wire, take it around to the back, and I'm going to bring it up between the wires, and scoop it around to meet at the top, and then I'm going to hold that again, and take it around and secure it at the top. Do the same with this bottom one, take it around to the back, bring it up between the two. Scoop it around to meet towards the top there. And then hold it in place and go around. And then with this last one, and with this wire now in the middle on this side, take that around to the back, and I'm going to scoop it up. I've got to go between the wires, haven't I, to come to the front. Scoop it up to meet at the very top there.
and the same for this one go round to the back come up between the two wires scoop it around to meet at the top And then that wire goes around like that. So holding the top together now, I'm going to take this top wire and secure the top by going around the whole thing couple of times and then I'm going to cut the top wires and we want I can just find my tape I want this right hand one to be one centimeter and I want the top wire the left one to be about two so it's longer so we have a longer curl on the one side we cut this wire off now press that around a bit short so it doesn't come over the edge so finish off these wires so if we bend them over to the back oops, cut them off and then just press them around so have a look at your wires from the front before you finish off these and just make sure all the shapes are how you want them to be because when you're first starting out it's never going to look how you want it to and you'll learn early on that the wires do tend to have a mind of their own and do what they want to do so you'll find you'll never make the same piece twice which is a good thing because that means we all end up with unique pieces no matter what tutorials we follow you can always make it your own I'm just adjusting my wires a little bit I'm going to pull that one down a little bit always just keep messing around because it's, it's yours at the end of the day you can do whatever you want with it So now I'm going to take the little one, I'm going to make a little bit of a gap between them, take the little wire and I'm going to bend that one, I'm going to curl it down using the smallest one of the bail pliers and I'm twisting it really firmly just around that one just to make a really tight little curl there and then the other one I want to be a bit bigger shape that one around pull it down to sit a bit bigger try and close that curl that's it then we need to attach a jump ring so you can hang your cord through there so you'll need two pairs of pliers now for this unless you've got strong fingers and put your jump ring on so you can attach it you can dangle it to something and you could make earrings as well to match if you want to so to make the little dangle attachment you'll need um five inches of your base wire which is 20 gauge that's 0.8 millimeter i've got an i've got an eight millimeter jump ring um you'll need some round nose pliers and i've got a little round 
Abishan and Moini is about six. Seven, is it? Is that seven? Seven millimeters. So it's quite tiny. You can use any size you like, really. I was really surprised at the colour of this one just when I spotted it in the tub. But yeah, anything at around a five millimeter to say an eight or a ten. I wouldn't go any bigger because the bigger you go, the less likely you are to hold it in the lost it already in the wire. So we need the centre point of the wire and we need the stone flat on your finger and we need the centre of the wire against the stone. Carefully wrap the wire around the stone. And you won't get this right the first time but it's worth persisting with because you can add these to anything and they're just really lovely. I love seeing little stones added to things. So now holding the stone against your finger, we're just going to wrap the wire around the stone and I'm wrapping around the front of the stone. Like that. So it's not going to fall through the front. There's nothing stopping it falling out the back, so we'll do that bit now. So I've turned it over. So now I'm going to hold the stone in place. And carefully bring the wire over the edge of the stone, but I'm still going around. I'm just going around over the stone. I don't know why the camera keeps changing the focus I think it's because I keep going towards the edges I'll try and stay in the middle so I've gone all the way around so now the back is held and the front is held so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to separate the sides a little bit I'm going to pull that down So on the back there, I'm going to bring that wire straight the way up like that. And then on the front, where it meets that wire, I'm going to take it around. And any movement you make now, you may pop your stone out and throw it across the floor. So you have to be ever so careful. And if you do, if your stone comes flying out, grab a new piece of wire and start again because this is really worth learning. It's lovely to have a few of these. You can attach them to everything and everything. You could just attach it to an ear wire and have them as little dangly earrings. So I'm just pulling the wires forward a little bit so it doesn't pop out. And that's it, that's all there is to it. Just holds it in there because it's so small and the wire is nice and tough. It just it just holds it. So we take the just need to cut that wire off there. I'm gonna to have to mention that you need more tools. I only said round nose and eye. So I'm just squeezing that around and then take your round nose so if you're going to be attaching it to a jump ring you need it to go the ring needs to go to the side so bent it to the one way Grip it with your own nose and then bend your wire over so we've got a nice loop. So 
So take your jump ring. And we're going to go through the pendant. And we want this to sit front facing. And here we have a little dangle. That's quite cute. It's worth persisting with getting the knacker wrapping around these little little stones. I don't always get it first time, but they really do add really do add something special to all your pieces. You can add them to everything. So I'm going to oxidise this now, and I hope that if you are a beginner, this is give you a little look into um, symmetry and working with just getting your wires to match each other. And again, it's just the more you make, the better you'll get, really. you just got to keep making, keep practising. And do keep practising doing these little stones because they are lovely. I'm going to oxidise this now and see how it looks. I'll put a picture up on the screen here. Thanks for joining me today. Hope you find this tutorial useful and part three will be soon we're going to add um, weaves and beads to this little pendant series we've been doing. Thanks for watching everybody. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.